Good morning. Welcome to Rising. We have a very exciting show for you today. Uh, nice to have you back in the studio, Brianna. Nice How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. It was not what I would call restful, but that's what Thanksgiving's all about, right? Cooking and communing, and it was a really good holiday. How about yourself? Same, same. Okay. But it's glad to be back <laughs> into the swing of things. Uh, tell us what's going on today. Well, we have Tesla and Figaro returning, and we'll get into Progressive's action, or lack thereof, on picking leadership in the next Congress. Plus, we'll talk with Scott Moskovitz about why critics are unsatisfied with President Biden's response to the lockdown protests in China. But first, last night, President Biden announced he will push Congress to block rail workers' December 9th strike and force them to accept the deal he brokered with union leaders and rail bosses this fall. In a statement made last night, the president wrote, quote, as a proud pro-labor president, I am reluctant to override the ratification procedures and the views of those who voted against the agreement. But in this case, where the economic impact of a shutdown would hurt millions of other working people and families, I believe Congress must use its powers to adopt this deal. Real workers currently receive no paid sick days and are penalized for taking time off. Biden's September deal, which Speaker Nancy Pelosi confirms the House will not amend, authorized three unpaid days off a year for medical care scheduled at least 30 days in advance, one paid personal day off, and a 24 percent raise over the next five years. As part of the deal, rail bosses also pledged not to penalize workers who miss work for being hospitalized and to negotiate further with the unions about improving the regular scheduling of days off. According to Labor Notes, Jonah Furman, it is exceedingly rare in the U.S. for the White House to have direct control over union negotiations, and this one was a layup. Put forward a bill to include paid sick days that cost the rail carriers a fraction of their insane profits and improves freight rail service, and Biden refuses. NBC News reports that the two biggest freight rail companies, BNSF and Union Pacific, made record profits during 2021, ranking in a combined $22 billion. Meanwhile, House Democrats say they plan to vote on legislation forcing the deal through as soon as this week. So, Brianna, I can imagine you are not pleased with, uh, with, with Brandon uh, <laughs> rising to the occasion and shutting down this strike. Yeah, look, it's not only that I'm not pleased. I was watching some Fox News, you know, more conservative mm -hmm. coverage of it, and it seems like there's a lot of solidarity with these real workers across the board. Uh, one real worker being interviewed pointed out that that 24% raises is accommodating for basically back pay and shouldn't be glorified as some big, you know, uh, boost. Um, that they are the currently mm -hmm. uh, asking for 15 pay days off. And what you really have to realize is that when they say they have zero days off, that means they can't plan for holidays, they can't plan for their kid's wedding, they can't plan for any of it. Mm -hmm. um, no paid days off, and they work these very demanding schedules because of you know how the train, you know obviously trains require there, there to be all this regularity. But on top of that, the industry has cut the number of workers that they are willing to have on to fill in by something like 20 or 30 percent over the last decade or so, at the same time that these companies are experiencing record profits. So the workers are saying they absolutely can't afford to do this. And Joe Biden framing this as workers versus Americans getting their goods on time is completely false. What Biden should be doing is putting pressure on the railroad company owners to accept a deal which is more than fair for them as they're making money off of these workers hand over fist. These, these are the quintessential American workers, backbone of our society, and it's really kind of galling that Biden continues to paint himself as a the most pro-worker president since FDR when he is going to put the thumb on the scale mm. like this and, and suppress these workers. Yeah, I mean, a week or two paid time off is pretty standard just in general in the workforce, so it doesn't seem like it should be a huge sticking point or something they don't get, frankly. So it is, I mean, I absolutely understand Biden wanting to avoid a strike or wanting to avoid shutdowns as we're heading into the holiday season sure. just in general. You know, getting the economy back on track is such an important demand for all Americans, but also these demands seem pretty yeah. reasonable. Yeah, he, so. he could avoid a strike by putting the pressure that he's right now yes. putting on American rail workers, put that pressure on the Cor corporations, the, and the small number of owners that now own the whole enterprise. Yeah. Wanted to note, you'll probably get a kick out of this. I saw people mentioning this. Um, the Secretary of Transportation, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, was off for quite a while. Uh, for um, uh, he was on leave um, for uh, I think it was for childcare related leave. He was off for quite a leave. while. Yeah, and uh, they didn't. The transportation department they didn't announce that he this leave was going on. He just yeah. kind of took it, and it lasted a, a long while. And. 
Look, and as as well he should, right? Yeah. Like I mean, the it point was just is in that, the middle of a supply chain crisis, etc. <laughs> but I think the point is that you know. People should be able to take time off when they have a new baby. I think he has two new babies. Yeah. People need time to take and care of their And they were ill. I read that story about they had a lot of illness oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. And the standard should be that everyone gets the same benefits as Pete Buttigieg, people in government, and elites. Yeah. Not elites putting the thumb on the scale so that workers have to bend over backwards so that they can get their luxury goods on time. Like the framing of, that Joe Biden used there and that so many people have been using um, to make this, to put consumers against workers... It's 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 a playbook they've been using for a really long time. Unfortunately, it's been effective. But I think that they're really messing up here because people have a lot of sympathy for folks in this particular industry. Industry, the work they do, they can't be written off as like baristas or folks who just you know got a basket weaving degree or whatever. These are the quote unquote real sure. Americans they've been elevating for but so long. But if the long. Secretary of Transportation could take weeks off for leave, maybe a little bit of paid sick time for the workers seems. Seems fair to me. One hundred percent. Let's see what rail, railroad Joe. What is he? Amtrak Joe. Amtrak Joe. <laughs> With his name on a plaque in the Delaware Amtrak station. Let's see if he actually um, comes through for the people that he's been kind of stealing valor from. The only all this time, time I think I ever saw Joe Biden in person uh, was on the Amtrak was t- train to New York. Mm. He was in a different cabin for me. I just oh, saw him. Well, go, next go time you see him, you're gonna have to give him a little. Gonna lunch. have to let him know. I'm gonna have to say, Brown is very, very upset with you. <laughs> Hello. All right. We'll have more rising for you right after this. 